Hello everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this video, I'm gonna talk about how to export and render your projects. So this is a topic that I haven't covered yet because it can get kind of complicated if you try to talk about every single little detail. So by the end of this video, I hope that probably most of you will have a good understanding of the basics of exporting that'll work for you in nine out of 10 cases. Now let's say we're in Premiere Pro and we're done editing our project. We've put all the clips together how we want, sequenced it, music, all that, and we're just ready to save it and export it as a video. So we can upload it to somewhere like YouTube or Facebook or Vimeo. How do we do that? Well, it does matter what you have highlighted first of all. So let's actually highlight the sequence that we want to export. In this case, there's only one sequence open. You can tell it's highlighted because there's the blue around it. And then you can go to File, Export, Media. Shortcut for that on Mac is Command M. So if you click that, it should open the Export Settings window. And there's a few important settings for you to choose in this window. So on the left-hand side, you just have a preview of what your project looks like. And then on the bottom, you have a timeline scrubber. So the playhead lets you go through and see perhaps what was at the end and beginning of your clips. And then at the bottom you have this little source range meter. So you can choose to export the entire sequence or just your in and out points. So you can set the in and out points here in the export settings using these two little triangle buttons or just dragging them over. So let's say you only want to export a specific clip for some reason. Now it'll only export that blue line that you made. Or let's say you were working on your timeline, you can always press I to make an in point and O to make an out point. And this would be your selected range so that when you went to export media and you were in the settings, if you were to choose sequence in to out, it would only render those portions. But rendering the entire sequence should usually work well if you have nothing extra on your timeline or nothing way over on the end and a whole bunch of blank space. Now the next thing that confuses a ton of people and the most common question is, what are the best export settings? So here you have your export settings little box and you can choose the export format. Now when I click on this drop down, you'll see that there's so many different options and this is one of the reasons I haven't made this video up until now because it just gave me a headache trying to think about how I would explain every single one of these options and every single one of the presets that go with them. Because one, you probably won't use them 95% of the time except for one of them. And two, the stuff can get pretty detailed and complicated when it comes to bit rate and all these different numbers that I'm not going to pretend like I, I know absolutely everything about. So there's Wikipedia and more research for that. But I've chosen to make this video because I know it'll help most of you for what most of you are trying to do, get the best settings. So let's choose H.264. This is one of the most commonly used formats and this is the one that will work great for YouTube, Facebook, Vimeo, Twitter, etc. And the great part about Adobe Premiere and any of these later versions or CC is that they have a whole bunch of presets that are already built in to give you the best settings for all of these different things. So the one that I always use and the one that I use for this video here is YouTube 1080p HD. That'll automatically set all of these settings exactly how YouTube likes them, proper bit rate, quality, and all that so that YouTube does the best job and has the easiest time uploading and processing your video. Not only is there one for YouTube, there's YouTube 4K if you had a 4K sequence, or smaller sizes if you needed, but there's Vimeo, Twitter, mobile devices, Facebook, or just high quality 1080p in general. So use all of these presets and that'll cover you for 90% of the cases that you're trying to export. The other settings to pay attention and the options that you have here are obviously to change the name of the file. So this is just exporting as the name of the sequence, but if I click this, I can name it whatever I want, .mp4, and then you do have options to go in and do different things with effects, video, audio, captions, and all that, which you probably won't use that often. I don't really think that it's good to apply a Lumetri or LUT 
at export it kind of doesn't give you as much flexibility and I don't really think you should be editing at export but this could help in some workflows so there's really not much else to talk about beyond all these sections that you probably don't need to touch that much is just pick the preset that you're most likely going to use whether that's YouTube Facebook Vimeo just high quality HD in general and then you have the options at the bottom here to export or queue and then it will begin encoding and exporting your video and you will find your final video once everything's all done wherever you chose to save it so for me you can see it's being saved on my desktop now sometimes if you notice this Q button is actually highlighted and if you press enter you might accidentally open up the Adobe Media Encoder which if you have Creative Cloud is a whole separate program just meant to encode media and export things and what this can do is just basically make your life easier if you're trying to export multiple projects at once instead of having to sit by the computer and click export every single time you can drag a bunch of things to the queue and then export them all in a row after you set the settings beforehand so the Adobe Media Encoder can be good if you're one of those people that export a bunch of stuff at once. I find myself usually just doing one by ones, but this is good to know why this is popping up sometimes or why you might see this happen. So that's the basics of exporting in Adobe Premiere Pro. That should work for the most of you to export the majority of your projects. And if you need much more specific things, if you have a certain project or client that wants something a ProRes or whatever, then I would suggest you look further into that detail because it just wouldn't make sense for me to try to fit every single format into this one video. That is a separate project for a separate day. Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. If you're new to my channel, definitely subscribe to stay tuned for future videos. You can follow me on social media at Justin Odisho, like Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to reach out or stay in touch, let me know what you thought in the comments. Leave a like on this video. And once again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.